Hi, and welcome back to Second Rate Film School. I'm Andrew. I'm still in Vermont. And again, look who just walked in across the street from the Minuteman. John Volstead's here again. <laughs> so, yeah, um, if you guys haven't checked out the commentary track we originally did with John um, about his, some of the three different episodes, um, click the link below. And then also click the link for his interview with his TV brother, William Sanderson. So we're getting the trilogy of Newhart um, interviews today completed. So welcome Yay. back. Oh, good to be back. Good to see you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So last time we talked, you know, speci about specific episodes, but this time I figured it'd be um, good to talk about a little bit more about the man behind the Daryl and um, some, uh, some of the rest of your career in the show. So, um, sure. Yeah. So, begin with, you were born in Norway. I was. I was born in Oslo, Norway, in 1951. There you go. So. Won't tell people how old that is, and you know, keep you seeming. February twentieth. Yes, I'm a Pisces. Uh, if they need to know my sign, there we go. And to send gifts as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. So everyone send a send a card, send a gift. Send yeah. A no. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just to my you, favorite charity. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then, yeah, you um, immigrated here with your uh, mom, and uh, right. when you were ten months old, so you know you um, right. We came over on the uh, the Queen Elizabeth. The first, we came to Ellis Island. Wait, was Ellis was Island? Oh, oh, El oh, yeah, Ellis Island was open in the early yeah. 50s. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how it's like you'd think of that as a turn of the century, like late 1800s. Like, oh, yeah, no, it, <laughs> it, actually, it actually still was a thing in the 50s. So, Right. All right well, that, so, yeah, you um, moved here then shortly after, and then you guys bounced around the U.S. for a while. <clears> yeah, we lived, in, uh, we lived in Brooklyn for a while, Okay. Cool. in New York. And then uh, my mom's brother was uh, had moved to Minnesota to become a lawyer, and he uh, asked us to come there, and uh, so we came to Minnesota, and lived there for quite a few years. Then moved from there. Mom knew about my aspirations to become an actor, uh, so we gradually moved towards L.A. Went to Texas first, and uh, that's where I started acting and. Uh, at the Casa Manana Theater in Fort Worth, Texas. It was like a teenage drama workshop thing. I was like 13 years old. So, and then, yeah, you finally, you know, made it out to LA. I did, yes. And that was like 1964, I believe. And so you were still reasonably young. I found out that um, through my stalking, I mean, wikipedia um, that your high school's like 10 minutes from my apartment. So, like I said. Is it really? Yeah, so if oh, you ever wow. want me to go egg the your um, old school, let me know. I don't know Birmingham. If it's the oh no, I was I enjoyed my high school. There you go. Yeah, I don't <clears> know if it's <throat> the original building anymore. Yeah, it's Probably like, not. Yeah. It used to be used during the war as a hospital. Uh, during World War Two, it was a hospital. Yeah, you because know, out in the valley during um, that era, there was like nothing. It was like orchards and all that still. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Stewart actually, I was reading a book about him. Um, crashed his plane in like the middle of Van Nuys um, right after he won his Oscar for the Philadelphia story. I'm like, Oh my God, really? he must've like, you know, how much property I'm just like, Oh no, you just took a bunch of peach orchard. Uh, I'm like, Oh yeah. And <clears throat> the city was small at the time. Wow. So, um, but yeah. So then, you know, after graduating, you then um, went to study in London for a while. Then so I, yes, I did. I, I, I studied uh, drama in junior high and high school and then uh, took off for London uh, on the QE2, the the second uh, boat, and that was very cool. So it went from one Queen Elizabeth to the other one. So exactly QE1 to QE2. It's the QE2 is the one that's um in I think it's in Long Beach. That's the one that's in uh, a museum now, right? Is where? I think it's in Long Beach now. I think it's the is, it, is the QE2 there? there? Yeah, I, I, I one of them's down there. I think. I think it's. I didn't know one. that. Yeah, it's like a you know floating museum hotel. I think now. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, if you remember your stateroom, you could go find I've it. Got, exactly. I've got to go check out my stateroom. I you hope got, they rev up the motors for me. And well, when you go there, you'll just have to be like, "Hey, I was here," so they'll be like the John Volstead suite. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> the other <laughs> brother Daryl room. Yeah, just decorate it to look like the Minuteman Cafe. There you Ho go. Yeah. Hopefully, the meals would be a little bit um more hygienic. Right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> So, well, and, you know, as you know, we've alluded to it, the thumbnails are a uh, view from Newhart and all that. You know, we'll dive a little bit back into Newhart. So, um, sure. first question I have is, you know, um, when I was talking to William Sanderson, he mentioned this um, 
briefly that there was um, supposedly a um, consideration to um, do a spinoff with the three of you guys once New Heart was over. Um, do you know like how quickly that um, got pitched and shot down, or was there like a lengthy? Um, that was actually never related to uh, Daryl's. Oh really? Daryl's were not aware of that. Yeah. Uh, we weren't. We weren't. At least not. I mean, it might have been mentioned in passing, but but it, w- it never seemed like. Uh, a definite thing that was going to happen. Yeah, it, w- it would have been very interesting, and I'm trying to think of um, other 80s spinoffs, like um, Empty Nest and Just the Ten of Us and all that, just like yeah. imagining, like, okay, they have to bring in, like, every now and then, hey, look, Bob Newhart's here. Hey, look, you know, Mary Fran's here and all that. But I'm just wondering what that would have been like, so. I, 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 yeah, well, especially after the, <clears throat> yeah, since it was a dream sequence, yeah. Yeah, but then, hey, you know, a few years later, you guys came back for Coach, so I guess that was a we dream, did. you know. I'm sure that was all still part of, you know, the Tommy Westfault, St. Ellsworth thing, you know, you were all still in a snow globe in the mind of Tommy, you know, well, within the mind of Robert Hartley at the same time. <laughs> there, there you go, yeah, because we showed up, you know, we showed up uh, on Hart, in Hartley's elevator as a repairman, too. Yeah, which that, that, you know, again, is a, another classic joke that just ties it all in and really mm-hmm. shows the humor of those shows perfectly. We seem to jump the alternate universes. Yeah, because it's not like it's just you guys visually. It is supposed to be you because, like, you do the introduction. Or, well, not you, but um, William does the introduction. So, yeah, you're... Yeah. You guys were, like, the original, like, um, cross-dimension jumping, you know, to help this whole MCU cross-universe Spider-Verse right. stuff. You know, it was... It's the Daryl. We also appeared on Bob's other show, uh, uh, George and Leo. Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, I saw that. You guys did... IMD. Yeah, we, yeah, we showed up there, too. Yeah, so, <clears> I mean, <throat> again, shows you guys how, how big of fan favorites you guys always were. You know, that... It was always nice. I was... feel very honored to have worked on the show, and I'm so happy that uh, I'm still in contact with my brothers and stuff, too. Exactly. You know, it would have been nice to get all three of you guys on, but... Um... Yeah. wrangling all everyone on zoom um would not have been the easiest thing so no especially, especially again, in stratford the stratford Inn, they don't have the best wi-fi have to right yell at george to go fix that i don't know if i'm going to continue <laughs> the gimmick up further how much longer i'm going to be here <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah so um yeah so you know you've had quite the career you know can list listing off some of the stuff you were obviously in all the shows we mentioned but you were in stripes you know mm-hmm, or, right grenade yeah grenade great great clip again i watched that probably way yeah. too young but you know hey it, it didn't warp my mind too much um, okay <laughs> yeah and you were in um the classic um comedy joysticks you know that was right yeah. that was my yeah, myself and john deal and Joe Don Baker. Yeah, very different um, character. I mean, you're playing, again, kind of a simple guy, but one you could talk and, you know, but it's yeah, weird. It was like yeah, seeing yeah. you at that time, you know, like you're almost um, preppy, I guess would be the way. You're dressed like in a nice suit and then a, well, a dress at one point. Yeah, and then the dress at one point. Yeah, that's when Mac, when we were in, in going undercover to the, yeah. <laughs> to the thing. And yeah. I, I recommend that movie to everyone. Um, it, it, it's a really, truly weird slice of the 1980s. And it's just Isn't weird. it, though? Yeah. yeah, I mean, and it just shows, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm on the younger side. You know, I didn't get to grow up in that era, so. You are on the younger side. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't around, like, at the, for the true heyday of the arcade. You know, I was there when they were right. starting to, like, shut down. But it's like, it shows you, it's like, oh, this is a slice of, like, this is where teens and people like went and like how huge video games were in the um, early eighties, you know, before you got the true boom with Nintendo of the home video game console. I can't exactly. imagine. You yeah. know, and, and now it's just like a nice thing, you know, in the whole world of COVID be like, hey, remember when we could go outside? Remember when we could socialize? Yeah. You know, remember when <laughs> uh, John Volstead wore that dress that one time? It was great. There you go. That little pink mini skirt. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'll and be I drove, flashing up on the screen. And I dive through a car window, yeah. Yeah, and just just do not watch it with the kids. There is a lot of nudity in that one. Yeah, it, those are Playboy, those were models. I think they were Playboy girls, I think. Yeah. You know, I do have to say, though, the potentially most influential thing you ever did, to at least me, was Leprechaun. Yeah. You know, you were playing the um, the pawn broker, you know, the pawn shop broker. Oh, yes. Who, you know, gets pogoed to death violently. 
and my kneecap bitten off as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's probably the most violent death I think in the entire movie. Uh, there's yeah. not a lot of um, violence in it. Yeah, the reason why I say that was influential was I had to watch it every year. <laughs> you know, every year we would go over to my aunt's for St. Patrick's Day, and my two cousins loved watching those movies. And the Sci-Fi Channel would have a marathon of all of them. But yeah. Since they were aired chronologically, mm -hmm. by the time we got over there, it was like five o'clock or so. The first movie is like halfway over, so I'd say without fail, every year I would come in around the time of you being killed. So <laughs> I, that was the first thing I saw walking to my ancestors right. every year was you being Poco stick to death. Yeah, I didn't realize it until years later when I was rewatching, you know, Newhart again. When I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna look up what everyone else has been, and I see that you're in Leprechaun, and I'm like. What was he in Leprechaun? I'm like, oh, oh, God, it was like a PTSD flashback. It, you know, it came back into me all of a sudden. <laughs> yes, yes. How much fun writhing in pain as he was jumping on my chest. They, they, and they had to build, like, a torso so they could, like, plunge the thing and have all the blood spurt out. Yeah, I mean, the, the effects are pretty good for what was a very yeah. low-budget movie. Um, but yeah, Great, great uh, makeup, too, on, on Warwick Davis. Yeah, and yeah, they just did the uh, a sequel recently. It was like a sci-fi one, and they didn't get bored. Yeah, it was like a reboot, I think. Well, they had a reboot, but then they did an actual sequel where it oh. um, it ignores all the um, subsequent movies. It's Jennifer Aniston's daughter comes back, and just weirdly enough, um, her sorority buys the um, house from the first one, and I guess they recreated it. Oh, yeah. It looked very realistic, and they got... Um, I'm blanking on his name, the um, guy who played... Mark Holton. Yeah, Mark Holton. Yeah, they got him to come yeah. back briefly. He was, like, the only cast right. member um, they could get back. They could have gotten you back as a ghost. But... That would have been great. Well, he had <laughs> a, a joke, but they he gets killed off very quickly in the beginning of the movie, and then it's, like, a zombie oh, ghost oh. throughout the rest of the movie. It, it's a very bizarre movie, and it's just... It, but it took it back to the roots because the the sequels got very weird going into space and all that. But... Oh, I know space and yeah. The hood. I'm glad Snoop Dogg. I, I can say uh, yeah. Snoop Dogg was in that one. Yeah, he back, was. Back to the hood or whatever it was. I'm sure he would not um, like that now. Now being brought up, he's like, oh, no, no, don't. You talk need to get him that. on the show here. Maybe. If, hey. If you know anyone who can um, get me Snoop Dogg's number, let me know. Hook you up to Snoop Dogg. I know. Seriously, I'd like to get him to say, "Hey, Snoop Dogg, what's up?" Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, so you were in that for Scump, um, Joysticks, we've said, but um, I was reading, you were actually supposed to be in two 80s classic comedies, but you um, had the bad luck of being cut out of both of them with Ghostbusters. I did. I did. <laughs> sadly, sadly, but it was fun to work on. I mean, I, it was fun to work on. Both of them, Vacation and, and Ghostbusters. Yeah, so can you um, elaborate on what those um, parts would have been? For each of those, right? Well, in in Ghostbusters, uh, remember the scene with the with the female ghosts floating over? Yeah, I, w I was going to be the park ranger, the, the who who called in the uh, who called in Ghostbusters, saying, well, um, "These ghosts are bothering my men," you know. <laughs> and uh, so that was the that was the scene. And it was with I think it was Ernie Hudson and uh, Dan Aykroyd. The, the scene was going to be between the three of us. And uh, we started off doing a, uh, Dan Aykroyd did his really great um, uh, uh, dragnet impression. You know, his, uh, he started doing that really dry thing. So, but, but sadly, it ended up on the floor. Yeah, well, and that's um, the scene, in case people don't know, that's the scene where um, it's part of the montage. And I like read, like, a lot, the movie was supposed to be a lot longer because most of those clips were supposed to be full-fledged scenes. Right. And then, like... Uh, we gotta like cut this down. Like I can't remember how long the movie re originally was, but like we gotta just like start like taking a hatchet to the movie. So, and it's sad because it's not um the full scene is not actually available anywhere. It, I've seen clips of them driving into the go into there, but um your scene with them, the two of them is unfortunately yeah. not on any um home video version or YouTube that I've been able to get my hands. I don't on. think so. It was, it was in some book. Some some kid somebody wrote to me. As a fan, and uh, they, there was a there was a, a trivia question of who is this actor, you know, and all you saw was the, like the back of my head and stuff. And there were different. It was either me or Dan Shore, or I forgot who else. Well, that's interesting. So I, yeah, I wonder if it exists somewhere in a vault, um, or if it's just you know, unfortunately, one of those you know, lost to the 
sands of time that uh, that um, Columbia didn't yeah. preserve it enough. But at least and Dan Shore and I are good friends, so yeah. it, was, it was really funny. It yeah. lines up. So, and then with vacation, you um, I, when we were off camera last time, you um, said you were yes. supposed to be a mechanic in that. Yeah, I was the mechanic. I was the second mechanic. They had there was another scene earlier with which had John Deal in that along with, I think, Mickey Jones, and they were the two mechanics as they were driving into uh, into Arizona or wherever, too. And uh, they didn't think they needed two, uh, two, mechanic, two mechanic scenes. So it just had, at the end of my scene, it had the, the wheel running down the hill that, yeah. when they changed their tire or whatever it was. But I got to stay at the E.T. Lodge <laughs> and hang out with all those guys and stuff, you know. Yeah, you know, well, I read like yeah, read like things like that was a very interesting like movie to work on because they literally were driving cross country. I mean, you wouldn't do that now, but um, Christine yeah. Brinkley said it was um, very interesting for her because she was essentially on set the entire time because they knew um, her big scene, you know, when Clark's about to cheat on her was need to be safe to like a rain or cheat on Ellen with her was um, a rainy day and like okay, we need you with us the entire time. So she was just driving cross country from beginning to end with them. Yes, that's right. Yeah, she was very nice. She was very sweet. Yeah. yeah. So, um, how like how long were you then with with them, or were you for a fair amount? Of time I was or... there. Um, I went up, um, got into Flagstaff, and I was just there, maybe, maybe four days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that you know shows again. You know, like just again, yeah. I can't imagine um, too many movies doing that now. Just be like having a bunch of actors being like, okay, just wait on the wings until we have a rainy day that we can exactly, fill yeah. with, you know, stay in this cheap motel. It, it, well, they, well, I think it's the, it, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, I don't know how cheap it was, but I mean, it was the main lodge. It was the E.T. Lodge uh, that overlooked the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. yeah. So that was like, and it was all decked out in, in, in scenic uh, Grand Canyon style. Yeah, so okay, well then even you can, I can't even imagine that even now, even an expensive, more expensive room. You know, maybe now they would have. You should check that room. out. Look up. Look, I think it's still called the ET Lodge. Or yeah, I'll look it up. Whatever. Um, but... Yeah, and th that's yeah. Um, the famous scene where you know he holds up the um, cash register. I guess in the that's when they do the whole um, him stealing the money from the cash register and it's like, hey, don't you want to look at the Grand Canyon? You know, Chevy Chase goes like, right, yeah, we looked at. It. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think they cut a, lot of, a few scenes out of that one. Again, you know, it's it's yeah. sad that we couldn't have seen more of these classic movies and, you know, had more John... We'll have to, you know, instead of release the Snyder Cut, release the John Volstead Cut. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Let me, let me give... Let me give... Uh, yeah. yeah we're, hey, Warner give Brothers, what are you doing? <laughs> we're re-editing re it, yeah. You know, the new Ghostbusters is coming out... What, what better time to do that now? Yeah, uh, I don't know anything come about the catching. It. It'll Who's come out it? Huh? It's going to come out eventually. Um, but yeah, they have um, Paul Rudd is in it. Um, oh, I like Paul Rudd. Yeah, Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things is playing. Oh, like, yeah. I guess Harold Ramis's grandson, and oh, really? I don't recognize anyone else in it. But it's oh it, wow! It looks like a very weird movie. I don't know. Yeah, you know, like they're trying to try and play it as differently from the 2016 movie as possible so we'll be, it'll be interesting to see what is, we get with that is jason reitman directing it too? yeah yeah which is funny because he said that. years ago um he said years ago because people were like oh you need to do it you need to do it and he's like and no my movies and my dad's movies are two very different things i don't think you want to see a ghostbusters movie made by me and you know lo and behold we're getting a ghostbusters movie made here by it him. is i know you know what was funny was when we were doing uh stripes uh he was he was on he was on the plane when we were we were the cast was on the plane going back to L.A. and uh, and Jason was on there. He had to be a pretty young kid. He was like ten years old. Yeah, because I know in um, Ghostbusters too, he has a cameo at the very um, beginning. Um, he's yeah. at, he's at the party saying that Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson are full of crap. Um, so he was like fifteen, yeah. and that had to be a good six seven years beforehand. Yeah, so pretty young, so. Again, if we can get Jason Reitman on, you know, anyone who has connections. There you go. Do a Ghostbusters 2 commentary with him. Not with his father, just with him. Just be like, tell us what it was like yeah. one day. Um, so, but yeah, with Stripes, though, um, you know, can segue into this. Um, 
you had a friendship with John Candy. Um, I did, yes, a great friendship. Yeah, I mean, we didn't see each other often, but my my mom actually found uh, his family a house in Brentwood when he was looking for real estate. There you go. Because my mom was a real estate agent, and uh, we went, uh, we ate out, we ate a couple times, and got together. And uh, I went on the set of uh, The Great Outdoors. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, that was the um, one with the log cabin when with him and Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I went on there with my godson, and it was a trip for him. That would be pretty cool. That's one of my um, favorite John Candy movies, so that would have been. Yeah, um, such a nice guy, so talented, and, and uh, most funny, you know, Bill Sanderson. Bill worked on uh, Wagons East, uh, Candy's last movie. Yeah. That's a, that's a very interesting movie, obviously, you know, with it being John Candy's last um role but it's very interesting to see like when you look at like how they made that then to fill in like that he was supposed to be the star of it and like oh how yeah. do we cobble this together now with you know yes i know yeah, you know. yeah but yeah everything Very i sad. hear about john candy was like one of the nicest celebrities you know i've never heard a single person say they have a bad story about him so yeah no super super nice and very nice and i um i had i had a house that was in hollywood like downtown la like off of wilshire uh, next to the actually next to the Jewish Temple on uh, Wilshire and 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 uh, uh, right before right before Vermont uh, Western Western Wilshire. Right. So, I have to, so have to put that out. But I had Google a party Maps. at my house and then Candy came along with a it was a charity thing and that was uh, like eighty. 1983 or something, I think. And so, you know, before New Heart, to give context. Or, well, before it became big with New Heart, I should say. Yeah. So, uh, and segueing with that, um, so yeah, we mentioned briefly um, in our video that you guys were in 91 episodes out of the 184, yeah. so a little under half, um, but you guys, you know, really blew up out of the scenes. Like, you know, we we're talking with... Um, William Sanderson and um, briefly on the commentary track that, you know, like it was, you know, one or two appearances in the first season, a handful in the second yeah. season, and then you yeah, blew up from there and, you know, got yeah. tons of classic moments. Again, you know, check out the commentary track, but with the link below to um, hear about right. them. But I mean, you got Johnny Carson paying your bills. You know, you're, you, you guys were, you know, you and um, Tony were, you know, doing dueling pianos. And looking, dueling pianos. Looking like you were on yeah. like the Liberace sets, you know. Like, we, we, we were the Ferranti and Teicher guys, yeah. Yeah, which you, I know you said in the commentary you played the combs yourself. Did you guys pay, play the pianos yourself, or was that dubbed in? No, no, it's, it's, it's dubbed in, but we, I think we, we, we worked on our fingering and stuff. Yeah, you, you, know? you, did a, you actually did a good job, because after finding that, I'm like, okay, let me watch the episode to see. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, are the two of them actually really good at playing piano, and this just has not come up yet? But, <laughs> but yeah, you, the, the set looks like right out of, like, Liberace. You know, like a Korean, Doesn't it? Yeah, like, just, yeah. again, and, you know, it goes to the Larry Daryl Daryl characters that, you seem like simple bumpkins in a lot of episodes, but then like you guys are like the most adept, smartest people. Like you know, one episode it's heavily implied you created cold fusion, but just forgot. Yes, to <laughs> right. Yes. You know, and it's and, and again, it just shows you know how much you could do with those characters. That just like you know, it's not just like okay, we got these three you know bumpkins coming in. It's like we got these three simple guys who you, you're never quite sure exactly what's going on, you know, like are, are they right. simple in the fact that, you know, they don't know, you know, how a bank works, but you know, they're going to be able to play a piano or they're going to have Johnny Carson paying their bills for them. Right. I often wondered if, uh, you know, if they did like a little TV movie with Larry Daryl and Daryl, like, uh, like men in black or FBI guys. And <laughs> yeah, like, then we become the Marx brothers and go, go to, Havana or something. Exactly. You could you could have done a lot with that. That's what um you know William Sanderson was saying. He's like you know he he's like you know at a Q and A and they asked well how many episodes were in? He's like I don't know, but it wasn't enough. It's like yeah, you could, <laughs> could have done you know a little bit more with you guys. You know I definitely would have enjoyed watching a few more episodes. Yeah, I could guys. have easily worked with everybody a few more years. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. You know um, Bob Newhart. You know knew he wanted to end when you guys were on the top and yeah. You know, you, couldn't gotten much more you know popular than you guys were. I mean, th that was a huge yeah. show you know, to Gen Xers and baby boomers. Um, that you know anyone who I talk to and I'm like telling people like, 
oh yeah, I'm you know interviewing you know John Volstead, other brother here. I'm like, what from Newhart? Like you know immediately you know you know recalling <laughs> it you know and you know talking about great moments from the show, talking about the finale. That's like, it's amazing how huge that show it was and still is. Yeah, it was. It was good. a lot of people like the the humor. It's one of the great. Uh... Great sitcoms, yeah. yeah. And obviously, I mean, it took, you know, it was on the air from, uh, from 82 to 90, so you know, it took up the majority of the 80s. You know, I think it can definitely be considered one of the great eight, one of the greatest comedies of the 80s. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a shame, you know, that it doesn't get more airplay and syndication or... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that'll happen one day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wonder what I know. MTM's not around, but whoever owns the rights is like, what are you guys doing? Twentieth Century Fox owns it. So I guess Disney now owns it. So maybe we'll see it on Disney Plus. Oh, wouldn't that be? Oh wow! And you know, hey, they're you know announcing Marvel shows and Star Wars shows left and right. Maybe it, maybe this is when we revive Larry Daryl and Daryl for Disney Plus. Well, Larry Daryl and Daryl could do a Nickelodeon show. There you go. <laughs> It would be great, you know. Just get them on anything you can. Yes, Let's try to been. pitch that. Yeah. You know, second second rate film company presents Larry Daryl and Daryl. Yeah, right. You guys could have been. Um, yeah, I, they don't do these types of shows anymore. But I could imagine like a Captain Kangaroo type um, show where you guys are like the presenters. Yeah, you know, William Sanders and right, right. you and. Yeah, Tony, well, Mr. Uh, Wizard. We could do Mr. Wizard. Yeah, yeah, I'm just imagining like you and Tony in the background, all, like doing a gimmick, trying to get the um, projector to turn on the cartoons. And now we're really going far back. Kids would be like, "I don't understand what what's this? What what are they doing in the background? What is that? You know, just hit play on the TV now." Right. <laughs> yeah, but um, still classic show and all that. And um, you know, as we, you know, a lot of people, you know, the thing they immediately go to when talking about that show is the um, series finale. So yes, it was kept pretty secretive. Like I've heard that Susan it was. Bouchette was kept like in a separate soundstage, like had to sneak her in and all that. So yeah, it, they had her hidden behind screens, like up to the last minute and stuff, and had her hidden and had uh, throughout different ideas of what they were going to do. They wanted to have like uh, some like a George Burns thing playing God, you know, at one point. And it was either going to be Sinatra or Rickles, maybe. Yeah, well, and I remember yeah, you were saying um, when we were doing the commentary tracks that, like, they even got um, Tom to, like, accidentally leak um, to somebody just to to their press to accidentally, you know, to throw people off the trail of what um, the right. reality really was. So, but, like, at what stage did you guys find out? Like, he's like, okay, you know, Bob Newhart's like, okay, this is how we're actually ending the show now. We found out uh, that night. Oh, really? We did not know before at all. Well, okay. Like, yeah, with the last page, they threw in those last pages, from what I recall. Yeah, because I've read, um, you know, read that, like, you know, the story that Tom leaked was, essentially was the majority of the script. It was, um, you know, the Japanese buying the town and him getting hit in the head with the golf ball. And I, the right. closing credits then shows you know, the wrap up where they brought the cake out and all that. And then you guys are, you know, uh, Mary Fran's still dressed in the kimono. You guys are all dressed. In right. The fancy That's right. Yeah. So I'm like wondering, like, did they then just like say, okay, we're done for the night guys. Bye. And then film that later. <laughs> so well, no, no, it was, it was I don't know if you get away with that now though. Like Bill was saying, like Bill was saying uh, to you, Bob wanted to get out of there by no later than 11 o'clock at night, you know? So, and so, and anyway, that was fine with us too, you know, because the audience liked getting out. They saw a good, good, tight show, you know. Yeah, I went to a sitcom tape. I'm not going to say which show it was, but it was um, pretty excruciatingly long. And I'm like looking at my watch. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I'd like to leave now. Now I know. Um, again, that, the reason I'm not saying is none of the comedy actors who are in it or were, were or are anywhere near. Bob Newhart or any of you guys. Yeah. So I guess that would still be funny versus this. It was a pretty mediocre sitcom, in my opinion. So it was right. not my alley, I guess. But got to be in it for free. Got to be in it and get a free meal. So what can I say? That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, that that was your that was very cool. That's neat. Yeah, our school um, a... our school um, set it up and I uh, set up that we got to when I was out here. Um, no, not here because I'm not in LA. When we got to go to LA for a semester, just like, yeah. yeah, we're all gonna go to a taping of. Um, a sitcom we're like yeah and then no, we went to I'm like oh this is this is really oh, no. boring. <laughs> oh too bad yeah 
Yeah, so I don't know if I'll do that again. Maybe if Bob Newhart comes back and we get the um, Larry Daryl and Daryl show going. There you go, yeah. That would be fun, huh? Yeah, so, but, but yeah, so with, um, you know, the finale of Newhart, you know, it's classic, and it's funny that it's been parodied to hell so much, but itself it was a parody. You know, it was obviously, you know, yeah. taking with, um, shot, just a slight shot with St. Elsewhere's ending, and then obviously the famous right, Dallas exactly. ending. So it's very funny that, that's the one that gets parodied that that's the one that's credited with, Oh, the show was a dream. It's like, you know, it's lampooning right. it. Right. Right. Along with also Dallas was a dream. Yeah. too. J.R. Ewing, you know? Oh, and that's, yeah, that's why I was um, thinking. Cause I've read where, um, when they did the whole, um, Patrick Duffy reveal in the shower yeah. that they, um, went to a different company and, you know, got whole new things. And like, they filmed a fake commercial for like some shampoo and like, they just like had like, yeah, where it's him turning around, and you can tell it's, like, artificially zoomed in, like, where they literally had to zoom in and blow up the film print. Um, yeah. Where he's like, oh, good morning. And then Patrick Duffy's like, I then took a beat and said, and you can have a good morning, too, with, you know, Irish Springs, and, like, would hold up the bar of soap. Uh, you know, and then, like, I, I kind of remember that commercial. Yeah, and they just, weird. like, you know, cut that out, and, like, that was their way. So, yeah. was, again, wondering the subterfuge you had to do. I don't, I don't think you could get away with that now today on a... Big show right. like New Harder Dallas if they were on in the 2020s. <laughs> True. So, but yeah, so we're now 30 years removed from the series. Um, Amazing. So, yeah, it's hard to believe. You know, we passed the 30th anniversary of the show ending in um, May this year. I'm blanking on the date, but um, so 30 years New Art. So, like, what do you think now, 30 years removed of the show and looking back on it? Oh, I love the show. It was great. It was. Like we were saying, it's a classic sitcom from the 80s, you know, top 10 sitcoms of of, of all time, probably, too. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know, what was funny was right before the COVID thing happened, uh, they, they, were, they were going to, CNN was uh, starting to work on a history of sitcoms, and uh, we were going to, they were going to fly us uh, to LA and do an interview with us. Well, hopefully we'll be able to see that when the you know apocalypse yeah ends. i know they did the interview with bob and stuff and uh he recommended that they interview us and uh so i got put on their back burner yeah it'll be interesting cnn always does good uh, those series you know like the 60s 70s and all that and history of tv and whatnot so that'll be interesting to see you know, i'm sure that'll be a very intense look at sitcoms but very informative <laughs> right right <laughs> whenever they get back to it yeah yeah um, yeah, well, and that's, uh, you know, the thing William was like saying, it's like, you know, it, it again just shows, you know, how great of a professional and, um, nice of a guy Bob Newhart is. Cause you know, he was saying that, um, he Super. was at the Pele center with, um, yeah. him a couple of years ago and was you know talking about how nice Bob Newhart is. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We were hoping we would have been, Tony and I were hoping we, they would have brought us in for that, but it didn't have pan out, but yeah. well, that's be, okay. We, we were there, I was there, uh, for Bob's, uh, 50th anniversary in 2010 that they had a thing at the Paley Center. Oh, wow. It shows how long of a storied career he's had that, you know, you know now yeah. the 60th anniversary in um, the entertainment right. industry. Look at, oh my gosh. Time. Yeah. Time, 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 eh? And he's still doing stuff. He's on Where are you going to be in 30 years, huh? God, I Andrew? Don't I don't know. Well, given the way the world's going, I don't know if we'll be around anymore. I, yeah, we'll still knows? probably be locked up for um, quarantine and all that. Still we'll be flying to... in the Enterprise or something like that. Well, hopefully, like I said, you know, the hollow deck. <laughs> again, yeah, you know, could be like just recreate the Stratford. Exactly, exactly, yeah. See, now that that should be like a venture you guys should do is just like open up like a hotel somewhere like in Vermont, just like you you guys just be like showing up every now and then. Oh, that... yeah, be like, hey, just come here. Well, maybe maybe the the, the Wayberry Inn will, will hire the three of us to come. See, that's what they should have done. Just like. Hire you guys to like just come up sporadically, like a couple times a year. Just like never announce it. Just yeah. like fuck with the people when they come in. Just like the three of you guys are just like sitting in the lobby and they'd be like, "Wait a minute, what?" No, when no, when no, when no. we're done with this, I, I and we we've got you've got it edited together. I'll send it to the Wayberry. All right. Yeah. Maybe they'll check it out. Yeah, I'd like that. You know, get, got, I'd, if I'm ever in Vermont, I'll definitely have to stay there. You know, looks from yeah, like, do that a for sure. Place. Yeah, I, 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 we, uh, my friend and I sent sent them some 
photos, some more photos and stuff. So they put up more photos oh, cool. of Bob and Larry Daryl Daryl and the cast and stuff like that. That's good shows. Um, they they still you know, get you would some people you know establishments be like okay that was thirty years ago we don't need to capitalize on that who cares now but they seem to still respect the um, new heart connection you know all these years they later, do so yeah it's nice yeah and we stayed there a few times yeah. L D and D we we went and they put us up overnight a couple of times there you go. You know, again, you got to open up the Minuteman across the street. So that could be... Uh, well, they have. You know what's funny place. is I have some friends who who uh, have been going there on and off for the last, last 20 years or so. They haven't gone off this year. but And they actually have a Minuteman Cafe uh, uh, little set. Not a set, but a, a doorway. It's oh. a Minuteman oh, Cafe. Weird. Yeah, I heard that huh? they got the um, the production crew like sent up this sign for the Stratford and yeah. then the Minuteman yeah. Cafe sign. So. You know, they had a handful of things. So, you know, they could do it, you know, right to well, now Disney and be like, hey, can we open this up? Wouldn't that be wild? That's, yeah. And again, hopefully, though, you know, maybe the mouse will um, do something. Like, we'll finally get, like, a good DVD set, Blu-ray set, get you guys out yeah. special features. You know, I'll have to direct the commentary track. I can send it to them be like, hey, look, they, you know, they have pretty good stories. There you go. Yeah, I, you I would, got the connection. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I can get two of them at least to come out and talk about it. I know. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of them. Yeah. But yeah, I'm almost halfway there. You know, if we if we get Tony to come on, I have half the um, remaining oh, main know. characters. Yeah. Well, well, I'll I'll be talking to Tony again. So yeah. So like I said, I'll send him this, and I sent him the interview with Bill. So yeah. Got to tip the balance. Got you know, then got to you know work on um, Peter Scolari, Julia, and Bob. Just but come on, guys. Yeah, I know. Join, join us. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, and actually, one question I have to ask, um, just a slight... Yeah, I tried um, on the New Heart Facebook group, like, asking, like, hey, do you guys have any questions for John or, you know, William? And, like, they were all, like, very nerdy questions, like, well, you know, what animal was um, in the sack? And, like, some, like, the very ultra-specific. I'm like, I don't know if they, there was ever, like, an actual, like, um, implication. It was roadkill. Yeah, it was roadkill. I don't know if it was actually ever supposed to be specifically something. Like, a, they yeah. told you, like... For your character, this is a raccoon. It's just you have something. This is a raccoon. <laughs> um, but I noticed, like rewatching the show and getting into later seasons, they you changed. You had a um, shirt with a logo or something on it. Um, the yeah, season. the shirt I was wearing was a, was a a children's cancer camp, Camp Tecumta. Okay. And uh, and Tony and I uh, uh, worked as were camp counselors. Not really. We we came and hung out with the kids. Uh, for, for a couple of seasons. Okay. Yeah, I, I was wondering. I'm like, I just like noticed. I'm like, oh, he's not wearing a plain white T-shirt. And I could, you know, on the DVD that I have. I'm like, I can't tell what that is. I'm like, I, I figured it had to be something like that. I'm like, it's a charity or like yeah, something. Yeah. Exactly. So, I guess it was, was a children's part. cancer yeah. camp that was really cool. Yeah. Great group of people. Well, that's nice and nice of you and Tony to um, do that. And yeah, all Bill that. came. Bill came. It was, it was came one time as well. So it was. It was a. Uh, a family affair. There you go. Again, just got to hey, There's a there's a serious family affair. <laughs> yeah, again, yeah, get you guys in it. <laughs> again, you know, just Disney Plus. You know, Star Wars, Marvel. Just give give Newhart one. Yeah. And we could probably appear in Star Wars too, since we jump realities and exactly. alternate universes. Okay, I'm just imagining. You, I don't. I'm trying to imagine. See us on the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, on that. You know, stormtroopers. <laughs> Right, just all three of you in costumes, but like with yeah. with um, you know um, your hair sticking out of the back, and you know Bill being like, "Ah, there we go, yeah." I'm stormtrooper, and this is my other stormtrooper, Daryl. Or stormtrooper Daryl, and this is my other stormtrooper, Daryl. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but yeah, and again, right. it's just amazing though. Like you guys, it are referenced in a lot of things still. Um, you know, there was a clip of Futurama put up on the screen. Um, Hi, I'm Bender. This is my robot Bender. And this is my other robot Bender. Oh, Lord. Well, that's very funny. Yeah, um, you you guys were an answer on um, Jeopardy one time. Right. Yeah, and right. pretty recent. Like, you know, the, the, these pretty are, Pretty recently, you know, yeah. These are, yes. And also on, on The Office as well. I don't remember that one. It was a, one episode. They sent me a clip uh, from a guy. The, the, one of the characters was teaching a class. Welcome, everybody. My name is Andy, and this is my other brother, Daryl. What, no new heart fans? You know, and that actually reminds me, um, earlier in the month I put up this, like, c compilation of, um, 
old commercials from like 1988 that um, my family had on a VHS of Christmas specials we taped back in the day. And there's actually a um, pretty extensive bumper for um, Newhart because you guys were preempted by um, Rudolph back then. Oh, I, I, yeah, you, you showed me that. I saw that. So, I don't know, here it is. Newhart will not be seen tonight because... Tonight is, is something special. Oh, but don't worry. He'll be back next week at his usual time. You bet. It's a very well-made promo. You know, now They wouldn't do, put Neat. that much effort now. It would just be like, NCIS will not be on tonight. And like they would just have like a headshot of like Mark Harmon. Like, I don't think they would go through the effort of coming up with comedic clips to match with right. what they're saying. So, I'll have to send that to you. I remember we used to do some promo commercials like for the beginning of each season yeah. uh, in those eight years every once in a while CBS would shoot some some promo stuff with us and is that like when you would is have that... to do like you know watch new heart on and you would have to like say the yeah exactly station. yeah yeah I saw a clip of um John Mahoney on um, Frasier having to do that and just like you see like yes him getting sick of like having to do like 30 like NBC affiliates in like one day right like, oh, okay come on <laughs> So you wouldn't have had to, you guys wouldn't have had to say it though. That would have, um, you guys would have just been, you know, doing your miming in the background at least. That's right. We would do on eloquent shrugs. Exactly. Yes. Eloquent shrugs. I'd never heard it described until you said it that way, but that's a <laughs> perfect way to sum it up. All right. Well, um, we'll wrap this up, but I just have one last okay. question. So absolutely. So it's 2020 COVID is hit. Mm-hmm. What are Larry, Daryl and Daryl doing in the midst of the pandemic? How's the Minuteman holding up? I think uh, we, we're doing the proper distancing. Uh, we let uh, one, one or two people in at a time, and uh, and uh, we get everybody to serve themselves, and uh, and uh, we throw the food out of the out of the kitchen window to them so they can catch it. We, we give them all baseball mitts, so they throw it. And it's that that experience of catching the food themselves, you know. Especially when we throw the possums out. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine, you know, like you guys trying to do Uber Eats or stuff like that. You know, that was... Oh, Uber Eats. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. Exactly. Grubhub, huh? Yeah, yeah just becoming like in a yeah, burlap sack and all that. Oh, that's a great. Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> yeah, very good. You know, and I'm imagining, you know, you know, with Dick and Joanna like that, you know, the inn must be doing a little tougher this year, year with, you know, yeah. not as many people coming up, but, you know. Gotta be tough, you know, them having to clean. You know, Stephanie probably wouldn't like having to be disinfecting everything nearly as much, but, you know. Right, right. Bob will still be hosting his book show, too. Yeah. Vermont Today, just social distance on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. And people, and Peter running through there screaming like a woman. <laughs> oh, God. That, again, like, I'm not just trying to blow, like, smoke up your guys' ass. Like, that is just such a funny show. Like, they're not a single bad episode. No, I don't. I, I, I totally, I, and I, I, I've got like a part-time job at the uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame. And sometimes people will recognize me when they come in and wonder what I'm doing there. <laughs> I'm racing cars. You know? <laughs> Not really. I could, you could imagine again, the brothers, you know, racing cars. Um, yeah. Be... I wanted to do, I wanted us to do like a commercial for NASCAR, but that didn't happen. Well, that could have been, like, funny with, um, like, they could have had, like, you know, like, um, Bill doing, like, the thing, and then, like, you and um, Tony come in, like, completely suited up with the helmets. and We'd be like, in our fire suits. Helmets off. Yeah. Or that, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, well, again, thank you for coming on. <laughs> Good to hear more about the man himself and your varied career. And, you know, again, more about the show we all love, Newhart. So, My pleasure, you. Andrew. Thank you. Thank you.